There we go. Uh, welcome to episode nine of the Celtic Supporters Podcast. And tonight I'm joined by Mr. Frank Roy, local man, uh, educator at Ladies High School in Motherwell, same as uh, the late great Billy McNeil, worked in uh, the Steelworks in Motherwell, and most importantly, followed Glasgow Celtic for over five decades. Um, I don't know if that makes me feel old. I know. Certainly makes me feel old, then. Uh, I am looking forward to this, Frankie, and I appreciate your time. Oh, um, and as I do with all my guests, we can I try to go right back to the start and your, your earliest memories uh, of Celtic, whether it be just watching them or actually going to the yeah. games. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll connect you in one thing straight away. Was I went to St Joseph's Secondary School before I went there, ladies. That's my dad. Because when I was at St Brendan's, I failed my order of bus. That's fine, my So all the numpties went to St Joe's. My dad's a numpty, uh, and I. But we done all right. In the end up. Right, um, on, on Celtic itself, I, I mean, I was trying to think, the first game, I know the first game I was at was like in 1963, so I was about five, and it was Celtic and Mall at, 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 at Celtic Park, Celtic 1 2 1. I can't remember anything else, but I always know. That I was at that game, and I know that was my first one, so it was. <coughs> so it'd be 63, so it'd be it like at Christmas. So it was either Boxing Day or Christmas Eve. Right. It was right there. They're the kind of things I mean, remember. Um, the first game I remember actually was at Fir Park in 1966 when Celtic won the league. Was it? Uh, the first one in the nine in a row, so uh, Celtic won one, and Bogle Leonard scored, and that was the main Sam and my dad in the first row, and I can just. I remember more than any, more than the game was the, the stand across the main stand was all the guys on the roof. From one that end of the stadium, stand other, at school? across across the main ah, stand, right, so yeah. all, all you had was all these guys, hundreds of them, right along the top of it. And that's as a kid when you're looking at, you're like, whoa, what are they doing up there? I don't think that. I don't think that. And it's oh, all the same. I don't think that's a new story either. But, but, <laughs> I, do you know the funny thing was actually the anecdote to that was like. Like ten years later, we used to jump in over the wall at Fir Park on a Sunday. Aye. With dad and people like that. I used to, to play football, oh, and we done it. We used to well, we were up there just to see what it was like. You know? oh, so right, we did it. That was my kind of, that was my kind of introduction to the to, to, to that I can remember actually going to a game and, and just getting caught up in the whole thing with being a Celtic sport. And that was me caught. That's that's good. That I've got somebody mm-hmm. only you're saying your first game yeah. 63, 66, So. Yeah. You've right. obviously got good memories of the Lyson Lions, which is I, I, exciting to interview somebody about. I, I mean, I, I, can, I, remember the, I remember the day we won the European Cup. Right. Um, it was a holiday obligation. Right. Uh, it was a session Thursday, so we were in the school. Right. Uh, and we were all up at the park during the day. I think the kick-off was at half five. We were all up at the park uh, in Shields Drive, your dad among them. Was it that? So the McConnell's. Millers and McCarthy's, um, we were all there playing football and just talking about what was going to happen later on. And we were really caught up in it because <coughs> um, <coughs> Danny McCarthy, who's to the scheme with Joe, who I've yeah. went to the game all my life, Danny's father went to Lisbon. So there, uh, there was a blue concert, a fourth console with five men left in the scheme. From your house? That's oh, brilliant. Yeah, so two of them came to the scheme and the rest of them, the other three were from Willow. And the two of members obviously was, was Danny's father and Danny. Who stayed between the, the block between DL Tower and Barnes Tower? Aye. And oh, aye. A, a guy called Jimmy Quinn. And Jimmy lived directly across the road. Somebody's mentioned his just name. In, before, just Jimmy. Jimmy, uh, and Jimmy and Danny actually sold scarves. Oh, right. Um, but, the, okay. but, five of them, aye, but five of them actually piled into a wee blue Ford console and drove to Lisbon and back. How long ski. would that have been back then? That would be a few days. But they, got, they all got back, they all got there and all got back. So. So that was the kind of time you were living in, you know, when you were watching men going to, going to Lisbon, and then you were watching the European Cup thing, and it was just, it was just everything and more that we thought it was going to be. Although I think, looking back now, we didn't realise just how big it was. Because you were just, young, because you're young, so you're only at school. And I remember going to St Brendan's next morning. I remember Miss McCready said, "Mate, who's the teacher?" She said, "Well, Frankie." Like what have you got to tell us? I almost remember, I just said, Miss, we're champions of Europe. Aye, can you remember that? I just, I mean, oh, I just... Can you remember, can absolutely. you remember a buzz? We'd obviously had the bullfrog in a game. Aye. Thank you very much to Big Tony, but Aye. 
Can you remember an actual buzz and the scheme itself? Well, when, I mean, I happened? definitely I remember that the buzz that day during the day, and that was kids because it was because we were off school, and that was and we were in that part just behind the later became eight block. Oh, I part there, aye, still aye, aye. swings mm -hmm. and all this type of thing. I remember that, and then we remember going over the bridge the next day to the White Bridge because oh, Tommy right. Gemmell was coming back. Oh, I of now, course. There were loads of people going across. Team pictures, aye. Uh, to, so you know, so people who were watching the television at Celtic Park, they then made their way to the to to, to the Erebor Flats. Or, aye, the Erebor Flats, because that's where they stayed. So, I, and I remember that kind of a buzz that whole year was really a, a just an exciting time and, and it was that year when I went and won the first supporters bus to Muir House. And the story was, I'll tell you what happened, I remember exactly. The bus left and it was a Grangeburn bus. So Grangeburn, the garage was just there. Was it? Oh, the Grangeburn bus garage was the downside tower. Oh, right. The Roland family, so they had the bus and it was St Brendan's Parish that ran the bus. Because what they were doing was they just moved into the school we were building the church and so they were, they were finding loads of ways of trying to raise money. money. So one of them was they decided they were playing Clyde in the Scottish Cup semi-final <laughs> and they decided to run a bus. And I was on the bus with my dad and that was, that was great but they only drew nil nil. So coming back in the bus they then said does anybody want to go if he'd run a bus on the Wednesday? Which they did. Was this the replay? This was the replay. Right. Won, you, know, they won, you know they won the replay uh, and that was us in the final and then they said we we'll names for the final. So the final was against Aberdeen in 19, 1967 before it, and they ran the bus to to, to Hamden for the for the cup final. The Celtic beat Aberdeen um, two 0 So the, and the bus left Muir House Road, running about where the car park the community centre is. Aye. So Jimmy Gallagher had shops here, huts, aye, aye. huts, and that's where it left it. And it was Greenburn, and I think it was all because the Greensburg people were parishioners, so they were obviously given the they were flinging maybe the, the bus in cheap and all this type of Aye. thing. And then about two months later, I think it was the June or July, uh, no, I'm telling you, it was August, there was another bus and Pat Connolly, who ran the, the British Legion, um, was going to take four or five buses in from all It's been mentioned as well. the European Cup. Is it Pat that used to get all the tickets? So Pat got all the tickets. Aye, Pat was he's, a Celtic he's been legend. mentioned, I can't right. I think he was a big jazz. I mean, he, he, he was just an absolute Celtic legend. Aye. So Pat decided to run a bus for everybody uh, in 67 to go in and see the European Cup. Right. But ours left outside the chapel so after a mass. Aye, the first, and then it went to the British Legion. So obviously it was a Greenburn bus. We we'll picked them up there. Aye. And so that was like four or five. And I've got a photograph in the house with, with myself and my, my dad and my granddad. And the guy standing and the guy standing behind me, beside me, was John Tierney. Was Bob. Was it by and he Bob? was there with he, so Bob was there with, with his dad. Aye. With Mick. So he was there with his he, he, he's in that photograph and I've, got, I, I've got that up in my study. Um going to the park head with my dad and my granddad. And I've got a photograph of me, Brian and Daniel. The same thing Aye, together. Right, right. So that was in kinda of sixty seven. And by that time I'm totally into it. I mean I'm only nine. Aye, that was you. I'm, I'm totally sold on, on Celtic. And then later that year, I went to Celtic Park in Moin. And what happened is I went down to Flemington, I get two slots into to Celtic Park, went to the game, come back, and my dad went absolutely. I was going to ask, I was going to see a thing. What were you doing, you know? I um, you never told him you were gone then. I can't even remember. Do you know what? Because it was ridiculous, you were only nine year old. I can't even remember. I must have. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. The thought of that now is but, absolutely but ridiculous. It gets but back, worse. Back then. <laughs> ah, it gets worse. A lot worse. <laughs> a lot, lot worse. So anyway, what he done was, he then said, right, if you're going to go and see Celtic, you need to go on a bus, somebody will look at you. So right. a guy in this team called Joe Kelly, and Joe Kelly stayed in the wee block, his family still in Leatherman, and Joe lived in the block across the Nervy Tower. Right. And he, I think he was the president or something like that, but that's pal. So he said, Joe, are you going to let him on your bus as a boy member? And they didn't have boy members then, but he says, I will let them in. And that was me through 68, 10 year old, going to the game. So then, the when the buses went, did the buses tend to go to Parkhead? Obviously, now you've got seats and that. Did the bus right. go and stick together and start at the same time? I, I, I tell you, um, the bus left, the, 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 bus, the bus that I joined, the club that I joined was the J2 bus. 
the Jimmy Quinn Celtic Sporting Club right. uh, in Mullow and it left through the high road which is at the town hall you know, right. Right. so that's where it left through um, in, the, in, in the 60s uh, and I was on it for years um, and when I first started going to see Celtic I always stood near the visitor's end because it was nearest the bus right. and then as you, as you progressed and you get a wee bit older you kind of started moving towards the jungle and then you just went to the jungle Aye. but in those first couple of years you know the 68s and my memory of the games was was the European Cup game so it was like 1968 it would be Celtic beating San Etienne 4-0 um, Red Star 5-1 and then losing the quarter final of the European Cup mm. uh, to AC Milan when Pratt scored so that's your it's all the big games that I'm really associating that kind of Time period uh, and then we moved on a year to 1970, uh, and that was a whole new, we yeah, took it to a whole new level. Italy? Aye, that was in Milan. Um, so Celtic played Bale, Benfica, Fiorentina, and the United in the way in. So that was like Champions League. United yeah. to Milan with the, the crowd? Aye, aye, 138,000. Aye, so the like Champions of Portugal, Champions of Italy, Champions of England in the way. Um, and we were the one, I went to, I went to the wall, Bale, Benfica, Fiorentina. The United hand the final, and I went to Brendan McConnell for a couple, and Brendan stayed in the middle of the Stephen McConnell family. Oh, so we went, and we also, for some bizarre reason, we were sent in to buy tickets because for, for some reason they decided to need tickets. We'd need tickets instead of just paying at the gate. All right, so you always paid at the gate. Aye. Um, but in that year, I remember queuing up, and I think maybe Mr. Holly's going in in the two forty. With money and getting it. Still a two for it, isn't it? Still a two for it. All I knew. It's the only bus I could get. Um, and it took you right up, and then it, we got, we beat Benfica 3 0, tossed the coin in the second leg, we beat Fiorentina, uh, we lost in Florida, but we still went through it. And it came to Leeds United, which was, and I, I remember April, May 1970, was just a mad time to be a Celtic supporter. I remember we won the league at Tynecastle on the Saturday. And we had to go to Leeds on the Wednesday to play in the European Cup. Right. First, the the right. first leg. And I went because your bus, the, the Jimmy Quinn bus, shared the bus with the Stevenson guys and Kiffin guys. And we went to Leeds. And I went to Leeds without a ticket. Did you? I was 11 year old. Yourself again? Okay? No, no. Well, I was on the bus, so Aye, I was with th people. Th 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 and my dad worked on Saturday, so he didn't get to the game. Ah, right, right, right. So, I, I mean, I. So you've been going to get to a very young age. Oh, I, did, I went to Leeds, no ticket, got a ticket as soon as we got here. Um, we just got there before the game, into the park, Celtic scored in 45, George Collins scored 45 and seconds. Leeds were a great side then as well, weren't they? Leeds were a fantastic oh, side. Scottish so, contingent as well. They were, they were brilliant, they were dead hard. Hard, hard team, weren't they? They were brilliant. The Brennan that played in the middle of the park. And he scored in the second, aye, aye. 70, Peter Lorimer. You know, aye, Lorimer. I mean, aye. they were just, they were a, I mean, they were a great clap up front, they were a great team. Then in the second leg, before the second leg, which when I think about it now, Celtic played Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup final. Mm -hmm. This is all three days apart. And there was 130,000 handed on the Saturday, and we lost 3-2. Right. Um, bad referee, and we just didn't take advantage of uh, Or chances. Some things never change. <laughs> but then the Wednesday, we were playing Leeds United at Hamden, and there were 138,000. So there were 130,000 on the Saturday and 138,000 on the Wednesday and I'm in the bus, never experienced anything like it, you know, just, just the surge of people, I mean that was the official figure it was 138,000, God bless what it was, but the strange thing was, yeah, all the people we always would sit, go down, right down to the wall, Aye. that's where he went, <clears throat> so I have to go out the toilet and I bumped into my dad. That's it. And he's like, what are you? Where are you? And it turned out he was only ten feet behind me. Oh, right. Just a mass of people. Aye. And he took me back down and so I so that was That's it. That's the chances of that. So I know and, and certainly went two one and, and so that was us that was us uh, Murdoch and, 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 and Hughes scored, Billy Brenner. We went through and it was the final European Cup. Mm -hmm. But this time I'm totally lost it as an eleven year old. <laughs> How am I going to get to this game? It's mad. Right? So, but see, see again, yeah. obviously back then you've been so yeah. young, but it was actually playing fit, I know, at no. the forefront of your mind. No, I was was it just Celtic? I Celtic? No, I couldn't kick doors at Ali. Aye. So at least your dad was a fitter player. Aye. Right? Aye. I couldn't play, so that I was, 
So that was why I was going to all these games. And I just admitted that even Danny Gaines was getting he'd never make it fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Danny tells you another one when he makes it. Aye, he tells you straight on all Danny <clears throat> Rochester. So we got to the European Cup final and the, 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 the boss decided that he would send somebody to the cup final in Milan. And what we had to do was we had to sell Fitler cards. And for every Fitler card you sold, you get a ticket in the draw. Right. So, and it was Joe Kelly who ran at the guy for the scheme. Is that the old tote things? I know, you know the Fitler cards. And just scrub you. Aye, aye, aye. That's I what that is. So, if you're an 11 year old in the scheme <clears throat> and you have to sell these tickets, all you do is you just start at Grange Tower. Merrick and there, and Barnes, DL, Shields and Muir House. That's what I've done for a week. And I just kept going back to Joe's house. Joe's like saying, but my, my, what are you still the house? the blocks and all. And then the blocks, blocks before he even touched the blocks. Aye. So I, I don't know how many I did. But of course, lo and behold, when they drew who the winner was, it was me. So I, I won an athlete about the European Cup final, 11 year old. Uh, but my dad was like, so it was like, right, how are you going to do this? Uh, what we going to do with him? So one of the women helped Elle McCabe and her pal was going, and they said, well, we'll, we'll look after him. So I went to the European Cup at that age, That's and it was just, and it was just, and the bizarre thing was they got into the San Siro Stadium before the game, and Danny Gatons was standing next to me. Was he? Aye. <laughs> the great no, Danny, Danny Gatons and, and no, yeah. a guy called Jim Curry, the two guys from all were standing next to us. Um, the game was a disaster, it was a <laughs> shock, and, it was mad and, and some of the things that happened but after it, there was a strike in Italy, there was a national strike, so right. we went back to the airport the next day and there was chaos, so people had been there 24 hours um, and it's the first time I met Sir Alec Ferguson because Alec Ferguson was the only Scottish manager to go to the European Cup final. Was he? Mm -hmm. And he just left Rangers and he went to Falkirk or St Bern or something but he was there to learn and he signed my big Celtic flag. Remember at the time, um, and I met a lifelong friend, Sean Sweeney. I met him for the first right. time. Sure, then, yeah. um, and it was chaos. We had flew out from Glasgow Airport, um, and what you do is you take two up on the runway, and they were literally just putting the first hundred and twenty people onto that flight, and we landed. And they phone, we did phone with that pick us up, but they landed at pressure. The different, different airport. We just as long as that, as long as you're here. Ah, it was madness. So that, that was great. <coughs> that was the experience. So you don't, you um, don't see that kind of stuff now. No, it just well the sixties and seventies. Obviously, there's been a lot of stuff in the, the press and that even to this day, twenty twenty one, regarding racism and all that kind of stuff. So obviously, we grew up as as mm. Catholic. So mm. I'm obviously too young. But what was yeah. it actually like being a Celtic fan in the sixties and seventies? I, I mean, I. I was just to be Obviously you were a bit younger. I was just but a bit younger, so I think I missed it. Don't give it I mean I, honestly I, I didn't experience anything really from going to see Celtic to Muir House. I really didn't. Aye. Going to the football, the games were much more violent. Aye. Drinking bottles flying through the air. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it was just a, it was just a different guy's peeing down your leg and Aye, you know, like, stories like, in the jungle and that. Aye. Uh, but you guys they used to go for a night out. Or like <laughs> that. Um, so it was a different kind of, it was a different kind of atmosphere. So I think I was probably just too young because I was maybe a younger teenager. I had left the Jimmy Quinn bus, um, and I joined Wish Emerald. Right. Before it was in the Cross Keys, so it Where left, it left it? the George. All oh, right. His owner was Pat McCabe, who then took over, uh, who then took over the um, Cross Keys. Right. Um, so I was in that kind of. Kind of grouping as a as a kind of teenager and, and your big games were <coughs> testimonials. Uh -huh. So it was like Bobby Moore testimonial in 1970, uh, Jackie uh, Bobby Charlton's in 1972, Jackie Charlton's in 73. When I mean, you think about that, that was three England, England World Cup winners uh -huh. all had Celtic to their testimonial. Still so, happens in it, of course, but that's what it all came about for just the sheer volume of, of people. And in that time, we were still in Europe. You know, in 1972, we were in the European Cup semi final against Inter Milan, we lost the penalties. In 74, it was um, uh, Atletico Madrid when they literally kicked us off the park. So the eight times were really, I mean, they, they, they were an exciting. I can't, and honestly, I don't have the same memory of, of, of the Scottish games. 
because it was all in Europe, and Europe was coming thick and far. Aye, they were, they were back good, and they were always expecting <coughs> to get far in the Aye, and that's where you're, that's where you're... Like, like now we're I know, beating Bar Scotland, and... <coughs> but that's where you're, um, and it was nine in a row, um, and then we just, we just, literally just get tired, and it just filled out for a while. What always happens, it, happen, it happened a couple of years ago, and it's Aye. hopefully swinging around about again. So I saw that in the, the Cross Keys bus, and then at the end, I kind of left the Cross Keys... Because to be honest, the, the, at the time, they were sending some really old buses, some double-deckers to take you to Aberdeen, and I'm like, and other guys are saying... I think you've still got a double-decker. You're right, you're probably, but no, <laughs> that's, that's the same one. Um, but it was like, uh, we decided to, to, I decided to go and go down to the tavern and join the tavern. And what year was that? Oh, that must have been about 75. Um, and I was, I mean, I was there for about five years. Bob and I were the kind of bus to you. Bob was mm -hmm. at the tavern, yeah. was it? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get Bob. The guy called John Clark, who's now in um, America. Um, All right. The old scheme. Aye. John Clark. I, I never knew Bob done the buses so he far did. back. Oh, I did, aye. I've he had a couple of chats with him, but aye, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, well, a, he's he's avoided me so far. Aye, get him, Bob, get on it. If I'm on it, you're going to avoid it. We, we went to our first European game as adults together, um, Celtic and Dundalk in 1979. Oh, the right. European Cup, Bob and I went to Dundalk, flew to Ireland, that was the start of it. And then a couple of months later, we, again the two of us went to um, Madrid to see Celtic Real Madrid in the Barn Bowl. Right. And we, we won for 2-0 in the first game and lost the, the right. quarter-final. Ah, well. ah, we that were in that, that quite an experience. Bob and I had to jump the back of taxis to get out of the way, mad Spaniards. Aye. You know? So so we do that. So that was the that was the kind of seventies going into the <coughs> The 80s. In the 80s, um, and I was, so I was still on the bus, and then I left the bus. And I, in fact, I heard um, Joe Ward talking about going with a, a late Jimmy O'Gigan to the game in his car. I was before that, so it was Jim Ward and Jimmy and I and Jim. I right. used to go to the games for a couple of years. And then <clears throat> um, I I got a kind of, I got my license in the car, so I started just, and that was it. Has that been your since then? That's been my since then, I see that was the very early 80s, um, just probably when, when you were born actually. Aye. Because Kelly Ann, so it was a. Aye, I, 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 I was definitely driving then. And that took us into the 80s, and again it was. I'm not going through this, but again it was. No, no. It was European encounters that, that stuck in your mind. It was like Madrid in 81, Chirin in 82, was it 80? And then Chirin was in 81, sitting beside a guy. Davy Moyes was making his debut, and I'm giving him a big. Yeah, that's the whole game. He only played five or and six games, And then the guy inside, told me he was David Moyes' father. Oh, <laughs> oh did he? Oh, oh, I didn't even know. He's like, well, so aye, be aye. careful of your audience, you know. Um, 1982, my memory of that was Celtic playing Ajax in September in the European Cup in Amsterdam. And very silly of me, I arranged our Kelly um, baptism, uh, baptism uh, on the Sunday before the game on the Tuesday. Right. And uh, so that was fine. Dan McCarthy was a godfather and I was a father. And the two years left. The baptism? Aye. To get to Holland? Did she say? Aye. How did that get to me? Aye. Uh, well, Mrs. Roy? Well, she was fine. About ten years later, when Aye. she finally calmed down. So, <laughs> so the, the father and the godfather left, um, uh, left the baptism uh, back in the house. Because uh, we had to get a train. And the thing about that was... Was that about a train all got, the way? No, no, we, we got a train to London. Right. And then we waited in London for a couple of hours and then we got a train to somewhere at Harrods or something. And then we got another boat. Uh, oh, boat did you get a train And on the boat, who did we bump into? But Bob. Again? Aye, and Paddy Brazzle. Oh, the aye, aye, aye. The two the Brazzle, So that was us there for, together for the, for the three days. Aye. But I knew I had to come back to face the... The music, the, aye. The music, the mum, and don't just yell at it. My mother and all that, I said, you're going to wait. I said, well, go because the train leaves at your clock. And with the, with the, the, the wife's wife and partners quite understand this. I think, we were, I think we probably just, I, I think, we, well, I, I mean, I, I would say, in, 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 in certainly in the Elm's case, because I was probably so died in the old Celtic before I met her, aye. Then, but God bless her, she was absolutely fine with so. That's but a bonus. My mother wasn't really too happy when she knew I was leaving the christening. <laughs> and the godfather, you know. Aye, so, yeah. so in the 80s, this is kind of yeah. getting into kind of later 80s than I, I kind of remember mm. it, but 
whatever, whatever the earliest like in your memories, obviously the, the like same extend buns and all that coming into the team, and then it obviously was, Big Billy becoming the manager. Mean, it was, I mean, it was. There were a lot of good times, but we never cut the heights. Aye. And your problem was you were measuring it against what had just been. We always do, but don't we? Even that was the problem. But we had some really. Paul McStay was one of the best. Players aye, and, and aye. Tommy Burns, I wish I'd seen him there next time. And we saw some not very good players, but it, it was an up and down, but most, mostly up during the early 90s. Aye, that still loads of trips abroad and things like that, and cup aye. final victories and, and what have you, you know. And what was your, always, I'll, one of the videos I always used to watch back when I was young enough to kind of start watching football and remembering it was the 1988 centenary year. Mm. Even though it was only six, I, I <clears> can always remember the iconic forty of Burns and McAvenny score, they won the double just, and St Mirren and all the stuff that happened. So, it, 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 is that a good season? The centenary season was, was, it was just, by that time, I had I was a season ticket holder, so... Um, I heard a story about that put forward to your son, we, we, you were one of the the first, I, at the time, the when I first had season I, well, tickets, is that what right? What happened when you, when you, well, at that time, if you wanted a season ticket, you had to go up to West Nile Street where the Celtic offices were, which were above was the... Was that in the city centre? Aye, but it was above the Blue Lagoon chip shop. Oh, at Central Station? Right? No, no, the, the one in West Nile Street. Oh, right, ah, that so, the Blue Lagoon Street, one's right? still there, actually. But you got up the stairs and you walked in the room and, and Desmond White, who was the chairman stroke secretary of the club, was sitting. And oh, see and your actually spoke to him. Oh, I know, and, and he had a, it wasn't he a biscuit tin, but it was a box. Aye. And he had a photograph, and he said, right, these are the seats, they're all about a hundred of them or something. And he said, right, right. so we picked, there were four of us, uh, Dan McCarthy and uh, myself, Jim McCoy and his brother Brian, and the three of us worked together, they played in the same shift. So it suited us. So we picked the four seats, um, two seats, and two and, and, and two behind, and they gave us like a wee, Bit of paper, like a uh, just like a that's what it was, it was just a bit of paper, paper, just a bit of paper, you know. And they um, do tell you that no, no, was it, it, not your name was on it, he'd signed it. Oh, and what you could do was he says, Go to the extreme left hand door, you go in the main stand, knock on the door, guy would open it, so you that. would step in, take the ticket, you say, Right, that's fine, on you go, and you would go up to your seat, and that was it. There was no ticket, there was no receipt, there was no plastic that was going there. Nothing like no, that. How, how, how much was that back then? Oh, God. I, 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 it wasn't cheap. Is it all? No, no. no, no I, I mean, it was cheap. No, no. Like well, I, but it was, it was all relative. So, even ah, to get one, ah, we, we had to sit down and say, we had went to the front stand in the jungle in the way of elves, uh, and I had uh, driving me quite a lot, so you're thinking, right, this is you thinking ahead. Ah, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. I mean, obviously maybe Aye, through. in comparison to what you were Aye, making but it still was, it still was a lot of money. Aye. Yeah, so we did, you know, get our minds about getting the money together and go for it. And, and that was it, so, and that was the whole centenary time. And then when the centenary season started, and then that news started coming out. And it just that took us on a different that level that of cross, strips by the Irish Cross. Cross. Um, well, I mean, nice strips and it just had. meant, it meant so much to us. Aye. We had to win the league. We brought back the Neil specifically to win that league, and it was and it was just one week after the other, and it was just pushing and pushing. And pushing. And that and tuck as well. Uh, every, every game. It must have been good. Was that obviously back then? We sitting next to guys who have they've got the trannies on, listening to the Rangers I, games and all I, that. I, 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 you, you, me, see, you see in the video. I don't know. I had it. I was on the show, and I had it as well. So that's how you watch the game. That's how you done it. You just tell them you were like. And then once you're going to just in this thing I stuck, you know, mm -hmm. um, you just make sure the batteries are all right for the week, because that's the only way you, you found out the score. Oh, aye, nice, aye. Um, and it was every week, it was just intense. We played Celtic, we played Rangers, January or something, we were 2-0 at Celtic Park, and we just felt this pendulum swinging. There wasn't going to go back, and it and actually... Two points fell in there? Aye. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, the 90s it went to It could be, I think it was the 90s. I can't remember. But so, so that was the whole feeling of, you know, you were just building yourself up, building yourself up. Then it came to the Scottish Cup semi-final. Hearts and we scored in the last minute. And that was 
the old and up that keep the Scots Cup and last week and it came to the league, Dundee and Celtic Park. And for some reason, well, we had all the kids with us because I wanted to do a Brian and Effie and Stephen. I went to the mall to see it. Aye. So we all went to the visitor bed at Celtic Park and stood there because I wanted to. Um, it was just pandemonium. And there was about 90,000 in the stadium. And there was no room, people were just falling out of the walls. I can, I, I can remember watching back videos of when we won the double and all I could think of comparing it to was when Rogic scored that goal against Aberdeen exactly. and I thought, that's I wonder if that's how they felt, exactly. well, everybody exactly felt that happened that day. Right. Was that exactly, aye? Exactly, exactly. Aye. Um, and it, because in 1988 it was all about Celtic and the Celtic ethos and the Celtic cause and the Celtic club and your family and what, what you came, it was all about aye. that. And that's what it was with the table trip. And that's exactly how you felt. I mean, when Roger went in, you couldn't breathe. You nobody could breathe. Aye. You know, and he hurt it, and it was just you, you, it was pandemonium. Aye. You know, and it was good. I, I was in the Timbers then, eh, in 1980, living in the Timbers, and eh, Sammy Walsh, young Sammy, God rest him, Sammy, his father, Danny Walsh, everybody was out. It was just madness with him. To have lived through that, for remembering mm -hmm. Lisbon. To be there when Rogic scored that goal is a, a lot, as you say. You must still, you must. And you're great players, but we, you know, we, we made mistakes as well. But you know, and, we did. You know, we, we had some, we, some great and brilliant players of mine. And he, before we, we'd won the four-two game, ten men won the league. Aye. Big Billy, he went away. They brought him back, and you're like, oh, this is a real throw of the dice. Aye. To bring him uh, back. Aye. 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 You know, when, it, when, it, when they brought him, when they brought him back, Man City. You know, oh, aye, aye, aye. aye. But it was all about Celtic. That's aye, it because it was all about the ethos. Of, aye, he's the one guy who. Had goes, all that. He's the one guy. Aye, players. Aye. Aye. and he did project that. He projected all the fans, and the fans projected it onto the players. You know, aye. Aye. which is stuff you sadly aye. don't see too much no, you don't. nowadays. Don't you know? I mean, the likes of your Tommy Bonzies and all that next days. You could probably say and guys like Peter Grant. Aye. Grant, aye. Grant aye. Would, wasn't my favourite, but my God, that's me to run through that. Oh, aye, aye, aye. You could probably say in the last yeah. while you've only really had the likes of your, your KTs and Bruni. Aye, for me as well, yeah. probably McGregor now. But people who grew up. Aye, they yeah. grew up going through the current yeah. system. But so any of the any of the dark old nineties. What's your memories of that for the start? Darkness. Up, up, <laughs> up, up until yeah. the, 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 the saviour. Well. Mr. Jansen, come on. It was just, we, we just, I, I always felt, I felt really sorry for the, like, Tommy Burns when I thought he was, you know, a manager, steeped in Celtic, brought some so players and the cadets. And, you know, so and unlucky. Were just, it just, every week, we were, I know how it's going all saying, you need to take your chances, but we were unlucky week after week, we were drawing all these games. Aye. I think it was, I, 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 it, was, it was over double figures, two seasons just, in a row. And it was just every year and the other. We were massive underachievers. Aye. Because his record against Rangers wasn't, wasn't yeah. terrible, but Aye. the draws... And it was, it was just, it was, it was not... Was it, was it, was just, it was just not a, a good time to... That's when I started going to the games. It wasn't that hard when I started going. Oh my God, that was the worst. It wasn't nice. Hamden was the worst. Aye, uh, well, I, I never had a season ticket just, then, but I went on the... You must have better get my ticket. I bet you used my ticket and you never paid me for it. I probably did. <laughs> I was going on the tavern <laughs> buzz with Big <laughs> Jazz and that when I was a boy, so <laughs> but that's my first memories, which, which was great. Dreadful. But it got you ready for the good times. It did. It yeah. did. And then, obviously, 1998, I had my season ticket then when mm. we stopped to 10, which unfortunately they yeah. done this year as well. So yeah. what, what was your memories of that year? Because I remember going into it and I th th thinking probably what Rangers fans thought last year in 19 1997 was no, no way we good enough to stop yeah. them winning 10 in a row this year. Because yeah. uh, the team went through together, the likes of your Reapers, Lambert coming yeah. in was one of my favourites and he thought, this hasn't got to happen, but what, what a season. I was, I, my glass was always half full rather than half empty. Aye, so I was, I, I'm not kind of open as right. I've never in my life said Celtic would be today. That I just don't, aye, like, so it's, not like my, it's just no in, in, in the vocabulary that I used. Celtic, no, they were going to get me. Um, I think the memory, highs and lows was done firmly, week before. 
when we oh, right. we should have won it. The, and we didn't. Aye, the second game we get beat at aye, East End Park. Aye, so you did. I, I, I think I was. I was at a couple of games at East End I mean, Park. Were you that, that? You probably would have been. been probably been that game. The fear, the fear of and, uh, losing it, and, and, and the same day, Celtic had used the beam. They were beaming the game back on the on the screens of Celtic. Ah, oh, right, right. Um, and that was a real. So you that kind of fear. But the first time in that season, I thought. My God, this is the of course, to follow me. Uh, and I remember what happened, and it was just, it was, you know, you went to the ocean to the other. Aye, just, that was I, I was really lucky that I, I was in director box that day, actually. Aye, aye. Hard, aye. hard game. Aye, watch, but, yeah, was, that's what I remember. I was, I was sitting in the seat next to the, the stairs, and just, I'm sure. I had to go in these stairs to get away for this. I'm sure we scored a set goal. I remember right, 65 or 67 I minutes. I regret that. In the last 20 minutes, yeah, but that was god awful. Yeah. But aye, I know, but still, but after, but after the heartbreak, that's the even flows. Aye, I know, I know. I know. So, Mr. Mister Anil, well, to be, I don't really want to touch on John Barnes and that too much, because mm. that, was, that was a bad time, obviously. Herrick had his leg break, he broke his jaw. I was there. Um, I was in Leon that night. Um, horrible, horrible. Injury. And we could hear it. I uh, heard oh. it, and there wasn't that many Celtic fans, we heard, I was, it was just in front of the stand. You hear that NTL strip, what did I think about that? Right, and you heard this snap, and, and you just knew, way, you just it? knew, even at distance, you knew something was, was, was badly wrong. I'm sure he broke his, he broke his uh, jaw a few weeks later. A few weeks later, I can't remember. When he came back to that injury, he broke his jaw, because... Mm-hmm. They kind of say what's happened with Big Eddie recently, yeah. Big Fiduka came in and kind of down to us, didn't yeah. he? And then we had uh, yeah. Super Cali, all ballistic yeah. stuff, yeah. and then... I know, I know. But then, again, you might have a Celtic supporter, these are the things you've got to take. That's what I always say. You know what I mean? You, you don't have the God-given right to win every game no. or draw every game, so you have to take it. Uh, take it in the chin and just bounce back. That's and what I just, always say to um, you know? uh, Rory. He said he's seen the ticket the last four years, and big kind of Jazz McGuinness was talking about it. They always say to the young ones, when we're winning, enjoy it, take it in. And the cup finals and the hardening and the experiences yeah, against okay. Rangers, because <clears throat> it doesn't last forever. No, it doesn't, no. And uh, the stuff you hear, even I've been on social media the last couple of days after the, the transfer, and there's still mm. people, no half of the moon, I'm thinking, what were we were 14 weeks ago? I know. Um, the big, the big man's doing brilliant, but we'll get to him. So, Mister mm-hmm. Mister O'Neill comes in early two thousands, and the kind of club flipped and it's heat done it and, and, and it did, totally changed. Um, I feel as though I remember the day he came in, and I was in at Celtic Park in the morning. Uh, you know, they were told it was going to be Mark O'Neill, and I just thought that the club had finally modernised beyond Fergus McCann, and Fergus modernises. This was the next level on the field because this was this was spent with money, and, and, and they spent they're going to spend some money, and it was just a roller coaster of, of delight and more delight with it. Oh, it was brilliant! That's yeah. obviously when I started going to games regular. Listen to him. I was, <coughs> I was lucky. I was lucky enough to to to, to meet him on a few occasions and sit and talk to him, and it was just, it was just he was and so, such a humble man. Aye, uh, really intelligent. I think a lot of really uh, uh, people that have not met him, he comes across that kind of dour and, and standoffish way when he's getting interviewed. No, but people say when you talk to him, he just, he, he just captures your attention Aye. instantly Aye. with the way he speaks about Aye, fitness was, and all that. He was very... Quite intelligent guy as well, isn't he? Well, very when I met him, he only wanted, he wanted to talk, when I met him, he wanted to talk about politics. Did he? And I'm like, Martin, I want to talk about Celtic. Aye. I want to talk about politics, I want and he wanted, and he also wanted to go to Prime Minister Questions. Oh, so right. I him two tickets, one ticket for Prime Minister Questions. Because um, that's what he, one of the things he wanted. Was that, was that a big interest in, there, Mike? I, 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 I think not, not just, just a, in a wider sphere. He just wanted to go and see it and experience it. Um, go, he met Tony Blair in, 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 in Downing Street. That's where he wanted to meet. I did, yeah. Among all the Celtic voters. Because we had, what, what had happened there was, we had formed the Westminster Celtic Sporters Club. Oh, right. Right, so and this was just before Martin came. Right. Um, we had formed it just as a kind of hobby at night so we could meet as Celtic supporters. And if you were a badge holder in Parliament, 
you're entitled to, to become a member. So ah, there are loads of policemen, security men, workers, MPs and Lords, they all joined and the, the sole aim of the club was to let people go and see Celtic. It nice. was the so, same aim as the tavern buses, the JQ buses, the, it was to, and what we done was we, we bought four season tickets. Right. Um, and the guys from London who never got to see Celtic were found out they knew that they could get the tickets. And they all paid once a year. Whoever was half of the seat once, up. they could go up. Right. And uh, one of the good things about that was, so for example, with Martin O'Neill, they were launching the Jimmy Johnson Fabergé egg. I remember that. And they contacted me and they said, look, we would like to do it in, in Parliament for some reason. Uh, can you book somewhere? And which of course I did, and we arranged it all. And Martin O'Neill came down, and that was the launch year. And he then went down the street and went down the street. So you're quite lucky, you know what I mean? Aye. That you were able. But what he would do then, he would sit down with the, with the club and talk to the Celtic Water Club. Do a question and answer session. Oh, okay, aye. Just the same as you would. Aye. You, know, you don't, you don't, aye. You've not so, got a lot of guys that are. No, and it was great, you know. They would just rather just get involved in no, stuff. No, like no, no, they were all very. Fergus McCann was another one, Fergus. Was he? Max, all time Celtic legendary hero, bar none. Um, he came down. No, no, be here. He came down to sell the sport club. You know, in the afternoon, we took him for lunch. Then he, he let me see, he, like as a person, he was, his he, was, company. he was, he was, he was, he was quiet and he was kind of serious. Aye. Uh, and he, had, he, had, he, had, he said to the phone, he said, look, when he's down, he would really like to answer questions as well. Does he? Aye. Right? <laughs> and, and and so I got the tickets for him, and were the MPs on so, um, kind of special kind of tickets if you like, not like a, a centre stand ticket. Aye. Um, and he was just he was just my absolute hero. But the anecdote it was years later, Celtic invited Fergus back and they gave him a box at Celtic Park for his pals. Alright. And he came, and I was in the I was in the boat on that day and he came down and he looked at me and he went, Prime Minister Precious. And I was like a wee boy. I was yeah. like, oh, do you remember me? Can I get my photo? Uh, and I've got the photograph of me and him uh, in, in my study and that the saying that uh, being a Celtic supporter is not always easy, but it's always worthwhile. Oh, and it, so I've got it, I've got it, it framed, uh, it's really brilliant, you know. Uh, but he, and he was just, I just thought, he's the number one, to me, the number one legendary figure at Celtic Football Club. It's got to be had it because we're, we're no Celtic football club today. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, I was like a wee boy. I was like a wee boy talking to him. Aye, but, you know, and he was, he was, he was, he was just, he was telling me about Croy Celtic supporters, boss and all that stuff. Aye, that's good. Brilliant. Right, so we'll crack Aye. on this some up. So we we touched on it earlier, but we've had a few guests on. Obviously, and there's been chat regarding the, the Muir House Celtic supporters clubs mm -hmm. history in, in general. Mm -hmm. Can you remember them for your way back to your, obviously well, you're on the KT one and all, but uh, earlier days with like the supporters clubs that ran ran. I remember the Morris Johnson one. Ah, that's been talked about quite a lot because I was on these other buses. Right. And, you know, I, I I know that that was there, but um, I might be wrong, but I, I think it was John McGuinness and people Johnny. I don't know. Ah, I think it was. I might, I might be aye. totally wrong, and maybe Mick Fisher. I don't know if they were on the Russian buses. Right. Um, I think they distanced herself at any rate, to be Aye, well, <laughs> well, I eventually they uh, that, that's, that's the one I remember. Aye. Was, and then, you know, the guys going through the mini bus in Eugene. Aye, we need to get a quarter to three. Oh, you know, that's what I remember three. that. It was a nightmare. You know, uh, it was a nightmare. Yeah, uh, that was freaking me out. Aye. I couldn't do that, I couldn't. I'm well, a, I, I, I drive in now with the rain and I'm in there at quarter to two. Aye, aye. Aye, I, what I, about I, I, costing I, I, a fortune in scarf stalls? And he's just laughing about it. Brilliant. It's, 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 uh, that's Eugene, isn't it? Brilliant. Aye. <laughs> right, so we, we always, we always yeah. obviously you've spoken about your, your trips in the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s and that, but is, it, is there any other kind of away trips? And obviously, well, we're in the, the 2000s. The, the, the podcast has been quite synonymous with Seville stories. So, I mean, Seville, every, yeah. everyone's got their... I mean, I was really lucky. I was at I was at the first game uh, against Leon when we put out Champions League. Yeah. Um, didn't go to the first game because we won eight one in the first game. Anyway. But I went to all the other ones. We went to Blackburn, went to Vigo, and um, went to Liverpool uh, and Boa Vista, Boa Vista and then Seville. Uh, the stories I remember in that year was um, 
goes into a pub in Blackburn and meet with O'Brien and then the pub got ambushed. And the, the guys, and they came in from the other side, smashed the place up, hitting everybody. You know, it was just it was just chaos. And then the police came in lifting everybody. Celtic fans? No, right, Celtic fans. The problem for the police was uh, the guy I was with and myself, we were government ministers, Jim Murphy. And I, Jim, oh, Jim, oh Jim, right, Jim, right. Jim and I are among these people. And they were kettled us outside, so we went to buy. And we said to, to, to look, we need to speak to your commanding officer. And they said, and we showed them the passes. And so you can go. And I said, no, no, we're over. Because if we've got to show everybody else, you better go and get somebody. And eventually this guy comes in, he's, what is it, sir? I said, and I told him the story. I said, nobody, nobody with certain colours had done anything wrong. And I said, you're about to arrest it. If you arrest them, you're going to arrest us. And see, you arrest us, you're going to do about the favour next morning. And it's your career, it's on my line. And the guy let my way. Quite rightly really so, and it was ah, terrible. But know. it was sickening. But then that's the kind of situation if somebody like yourself has not there that's got a level no. heat and can Aye, speak to them in a proper manner then well, and the jail. The two is just had walked up, we were only in the door like two minutes and the Celtic pub's across the road. Aye. We were not getting in there because it's too full, so we had the empty pub. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I have actually been told a story that you actually did miss a game because you, you, you were arrested. If you can elaborate I on did. that. Yes, I, no, I can't. Yes, I, I remember it well. I, you obviously know how uh, you can tell the story. There you go. During the steel strike, 1980, 21 right. year old, we'd been in the strike for about 13 weeks. Um, and after about 11 weeks, the police said to me one day, one good Friday over at Monday Road in Moss End, and several were playing St. Martin that night in the Scots Cup briefly. And oh, is this the same Friday? And the police said to me, it's your turn today. So I was arrested in, in, in... Was that right? Was that what they done then? Just... That, well, just they told me, they were just getting... Just picked a name? They, they knew who all the ringleaders were. Right. They were just picking us off. And it was a February morning. And um, I just reacted the wrong way. And I get, I get done with police assault. for assault the police before he assaulted me. Oh, um, well, then so you I didn't know that. I didn't even make that. I didn't even make that. But the good thing was, when I'm lying on the ground and the guy's putting the handcuffs on Big Jim Ward, shouted to me, you all right? I says, I am fine. He says, what are you doing with your ticket? Did he? What are you doing with your ticket? You've got to get your priorities. Ah, that's it. What are you doing with your ticket? It's not really, really much good there, but it's why I did, that was a, I did miss that. I, I forgot about that actually. Yeah, that was a good day. Any other, any other kind of trips that well, stuck out in your mind? Seville, your Seville was the Liverpool game. Uh, uh, I'll tell you a story about Liverpool. We were playing Liverpool at Anfield. And Jim Murphy and I had no angled an invite to the game for the English Premier League. <laughs> and so we drove up to London on the way home. We went to the game. And we're sitting at a meal before the game. And the woman across here for the English Premier League, she says, you'll never believe this, she says. Last Saturday, we had people from Middlesbrough. And she, I didn't know what to say, but they jumped up when Middlesbrough scored. Right? And I'm eating my dinner and I'm looking at Murphy. And Murphy's looking at me and I'm thinking, you're in for a shock at least. <laughs> so anyway, right? Yeah. So anyway, when the director box, spoke to Ken um, he, he, he was he was he was charming. Um, Celtic scored and Murphy and I are up hugging each other and the woman's looking. Second half, Celtic scored again. Murphy and I died not over. He couldn't know. He couldn't know. He couldn't know. At the end of the game, we're on the seats. And she looks at us and she walks away and leaves us in disgust in the, in the director box. So we're back into the, the kind of wee lounge place after it. And uh, Murphy and I were like, well, that's us. We're never going to go anywhere else again with English sleep. And she was sitting. And I said, uh, I presume that we're now the worst guests you ever had. She said, yes. That's it. Absolutely. She says, but you know what? She says, I loved it because you were so passionate about your team. Oh, and she says, what did they say it's about? She says, I've never seen anything like it. She was totally enthralled to that. that that's amazing coming for some, it's some it, somebody that this, that I'd feel she is she was like known as one of the best atmospheres. She in was Europe, just like so. what she's saying, I've never saw anything like it. Never nah. like, and the and the director nah. book, never saw anything like it. But it wasn't just me, it was, it was certainly direct. I mean everybody was just going it was, it was just going mad because that was the same final and that. In the semi-final, was, was we went to Boa Vista, oh, um, 
Brian about how we went to mo- we, we, the same people went to Boa Vista and I said the Boa Vista game was the most the most emotional game I'd ever been at. Ever. From the goal went in to the end of the game, I couldn't breathe. Oh. I literally was finding it difficult to breathe. Aye. Just wait. Did you, did you think the, that obviously they beat his man in the head, huh? Not so. One each. Did you think? I thought it was. Well, e- even kind of when Mark McNeil came back, did you ever think you would get back to a European final as a Celtic no. fan? Or, or, or no. And that was that was the beauty of Seville. The, the beauty of Seville, the run of Seville was, you know, I bought I bought like eighteen tickets for the cup final in the March before the Liverpool game because the tickets for Seville went on sale in March. Ah, I've heard a few talk the week before about the that. Game. And we went on and we got in, and the website crashed. But then back when at two in the morning, we were still working in London, and again we we were able to. And I had two addresses, of course, so I had a place that I lived in in London and up here, so Aye. I was able to put we put two addresses in, Aye. so I get double the amount, knowing what it was going to be like. And I'd also said to to Liverpool MPs after it, see, by the way, if we don't if we get beat. I've got 18 tickets. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I give them, you know. I'd imagine a lot of other people fans that I bought they a had lot of tickets there as well. Had, so, and it was just the build-up, because it always, like, I've never seen anything like it. I've never Tickets. Everybody was just, uh, and it was who's going to go, who's not going to go. And I was really lucky, because of those tickets, and one is a season ticket holder, I get one because I went to every game. Aye. Uh, you know, it's like, so that we, we also, and I was able to give guys tickets. Brian Doyle, Francis Doyle, the night before the game in Seville. Ah, oh, that's and amazing. Then we get tickets for them off the British Embassy in Madrid, plus gave them one of yours. Um, How does it, guys, who remember? My best the memory was, part, was, was the Sunday before it, and Paddy Grew, the Aye. Celtic legend. Um, oh, Paddy. Oh, Paddy. So Paddy was going to, to Seville. He'd been to Lisbon, all these places in Milan, but he, hadn't, he didn't have a ticket, but he was going, and I was just over a moon to be able to, and I knocked him for the sun before it was talking about him, I said, what's that? He said, no, I'm going, he said, he was fine about it. And I said, well then, you're going to, they're going to the, the cup thing, there's a ticket for you. Ah, I must have a feeling by it, was it? Ah. You see, the, the guys, like, you talk about Celtic legends as players, it, it is the Pat, Pat Collins, the Sean Sweeney's, the Paddy Grews, to me, that are Celtic legends. Oh, definitely. Because they're yeah, Celtic, so, aye. when you're getting a guy, Ticket for the final three days before it. That's been the last bit. Yeah, it's been through it all. Aye. It was. It was. It was. Aye. I just been felt a good feeling. so good. Aye. I felt, you know. Aye. And, no, I just felt good for him as, as well. Most of for him, he was just, he was delighted, you know. Aye. It was That's good. good. Nessie took care of Excel. It was just madness. Early <coughs> life. Start to finish. Aye. Mrs. Roy went. She would spent forty years of getting left behind in Europe. So she said, "You're going to Seville. We went to Seville. Big Dan McCarthy as usual." Jim Murphy, um, Jim had to share his room with his mother and father. Danny decided to come in and sleep with us. <laughs> yeah. uh, and in his, the streets of the bill, Danny bumped into his brother John. He had me saw for 20 years. He lives in Thailand. Alright. And John didn't have any way to stay either. All right. So there was me and Ellen and another three guys all in the room. The night before, the uh, night they stayed. So I think that was just. I think that was made a less of a fucking story. Like was that. that night before the game, I was sitting in the game in the hotel. Right. So we were in the same hotel, and um, we were just sitting in the coffee. And here I am, sitting beside another. The man. The, the man. The man. And, uh-huh. just, and he's just talking, and he's you know, and, and he's enjoying it, and his wife was here, and his kids and grandkids and we were there and he was just enjoying and just listening and he was rolling these stories of oh, is it? Lisbon, what was he doing the night before in Esther and the Palacio Hotel where Celtic stayed and he's just rolling these stories and I'm like, how lucky was that to be in this hotel? Aye. It's Big Billy. That's, a chance. That's just a chance of life. It's like two in the morning and oh, Mrs. Is that is going, Billy, we need to go. <laughs> we, need <laughs> to to your bed. we need to go, you know, and he's like, Aye, right, like, go and get a pot of tea. I just got a pot of tea and just started talking. Is it? Were you in the wee hours? Oh, oh it was just... You wouldn't, you wouldn't want that tea. You know, but, and then the game took care of itself, and that was it. Ah, you know. That was what it was. That was it. That was it. That was my... That's sad. Brilliant. I love, I love the Seville stories that have been brilliant on it. I've loved them all. 
Eh, um, have we touched too much on the, the 2000, the Roger stuff and all that, or are we just gonna... Uh, well, you're in, you're in charge. I know, <laughs> I know. And to be honest with you, you've covered kind of what I wanted mm. you to cover. And, right. and, and the other guests have all spoke about the, the Brendan Rogers era, kind of what's happening now and mm. all that. So I will we'll, we'll jump in and talk about something else. And okay. About, on you go. We'll, we'll, we'll pass by Sunday at the moment, but... What's your overall feeling to Ange? Uh, um, obviously looking like he's made a big, he's made a, a big new, difference. It's a new era again for me. It was small-minded people in Scotland thought if you if you worked in Japan, then you come to Australia, you don't know anything about football, and they were proved totally wrong. They will be proved totally wrong. I think and so he's got, you know, I didn't agree with his formation, playing Eddie and then the new man and now. It's not going to get everything right, but he's, he's proved people a lot to go wrong already. Aye, um, and it's very, very early doors. It's it's Sunday you've got to take on the chin because if you compare it to last year, it's night and day. Oh, the disappointment was we didn't make the goalkeeper work. Aye, didn't they? And Sunday I thought, I thought the creation mm. guy fitted in dead well, the left yeah, back, the I thought side. he looked composed yeah. and he looked as if he'd been there yeah. for a long, long time. The number time. one hate figure was Tony Ralston. He's been, and listen, mm. I've absolutely slaughtered mm. him on it, Hannah Taylor, but Ralston's probably been our best player this season, mm. they're mine. I know. They're mine. I'm glad Edward's away, and uh, right. to be honest, I, I wish him the best, because the memories yes. that guy's brought to yeah, the he's brought great memories. Phenomenal. Disappointed he's how he went. Disappointed how he went. But, You've got to remember, he's kind of wanted, the guy wanted to leave last year, and we took the decision, not to beg them, but to make sure they stayed for 10 in a row. Ten. So, would it have been right to leave them? How would you have felt if you had let them all go last year? I don't know. And I it, know. it didn't, you know what, hands up, it didn't work. It didn't. And that's it, it didn't work. We move on. Don't look quite, back uh, I'm quite optimistic with, with the squad we've got. Mm. I think we could have probably signed another fullback. And I think we're a wee bit short in the middle of the park. But then you've got McCarthy to come back. I know. You've got Rogic, Turnbull, who I thought has been one of our best players, but looked as if he was blown at his arse on no. Sunday, by the way. He didn't turn up. I thought he was blown at his arse, yeah, but he didn't turn up. that's not the first nah. that's not the first derby he's not turned nah, up. No, he's not. So I don't know. Is he maybe no go at the big games? Or? Yeah, I just think he's a young boy as well. Young boy, you've got so talented, age, you've got to give him the time, and he'll get responsibility. He'll take responsibility, and you can see the potential. And I'm, I'm the fine with it. I just you're disappointed <coughs> for him and for us. Aye, it was the wrong game. You turn up. I think the potential of the squad and the age yet works. Mm. It's absolutely. And if Big Ange stays for hopefully five, six, mm. seven years, whatever it is. Mm. I think it's going well, to be changed the ethos. Time. He's changed the ethos of the team and the mindset of the club already. You can see Aye, the fans, oh, everybody. Yeah, so everybody's got a laugh. Aye, they've got the minority of greeting faces. You know what, you can say, I love this attack football, but with it comes a kind of defence of mistakes now and again. Aye, aye. That's what it's going to be. Uh, hopefully Big Julian yeah, yeah. comes back soon, the guys for Spurs, because no. the, uh, the boy, the Swedish guy, I'll let it give back. I've got a worry about Julian coming back, because the guy's going to be out for a year. He was not he didn't turn up for us every week. Ah, I thought for the for I, just, I hope it doesn't affect for the size of him is a bit easier to start down. He was he was never the bravest. No no, no for yeah. the height of no. Nah. And Starfield yeah. looks but, give him time. Starfield possibly looks like the Swedish Raphael shape, but no, no. we'll see how no, no, it goes. No, no, there's only one Raphael shape. <laughs> oh, I'm nah. telling you. Yeah. Right, yeah. so right. what I've what I've got left is I've done a wee quick fire. Right. Quick fire round, which is nine in a row. Nine questions in a row. Answer them off the top of your head. Yeah. And then we'll jump on to your all time eleven. Oh god, right. Right? I know you wouldn't look forward to that one. I bet yeah. you've wrote it down anyway. No. <laughs> no? Right, so quick fire round. Nine in a row. Favourite player? My all time favourite player? Yes. Uh, Jimmy Johnson. Favourite manager? Martin O'Neill. Favourite ground visited? I think you've covered this one. Most emotional you've ever been at a game? Well, obviously. Player you most disliked? Whether it be a Celtic player or somebody else? Um, Willie Johnson the Rangers. Your favourite season as a Celtic fan? Season? Civil. The worst player we've signed? 
Can I go? <laughs> well, you mentioned Raphael Shay, Dumay, and Wayne Wiggins between the three of them. Thank you. And probably out the heart, you know, uh, Dumay was the worst. I think you've hanged this for next one as well. Your favourite strip? Yeah, I mean, just a hitch. That was my first strip. That's that's that's, uh, that's, that's, that's still wins. That, the the best team, the, the best team you remember seeing, whether it be Celtic or a, an opponent. Uh, I thought PSG was the best club I saw Celtic playing against. Recently? Yeah. Or oh, Bafford. Both I just, games. I'd never seen it. Phenomenal, uh, were they? Just absolutely phenomenal. I was clapping Berlin, like a seal. Berlin Barca, I thought. Aye, absolutely. I was clapping like a seal. Aye, aye, they were phenomenal. Mm. I, I've had the same, to be honest with you. And I've seen Barcelona Celtic Barca, Barca aye, but their fit was aye. unbelievable. Aye. Right, here we go. I, I would imagine yours will be very, very different to the last eight guests. Mm. Have you know? Have you know? I think Jasmine yeah. had a few old timers there and enjoyed that. Aye. So, well, I suppose it's just a generation of country. Um, so my, my goalkeeper. Yep. Is Fraser Foster. Foster. Uh, I thought about Paddy Bonner and people, but the reason I picked Fraser Foster was he's the only guy when 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 he had to stand up against a penalty taker. I actually expected him to say oh, that he was so good. Aye, every time. At times, you know, so. And had, and a player gets you know, I just I had, worried about you. If know? you're talking about having confidence in a keeper, then Fraser Foster. Aye. 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 I was like that with Joe Hart until Alcar, but well, he's Aye. he's gave me a lot more confidence. He'll get it. Aye, definitely. Do you got the your the four four two oh, old right. skill? I think it'd be four can, right. If I go four four two, you can go right, four three. The right back would be um, Danny McGrain. Aye, I kind of kind of see that one coming. Right, uh, just the guy was just. A powerhouse, he was just everything you wanted a Celtic player to be with skill. Uh, my dad's always said he was just the best right back oh, in the world. I, I think, he was, I, I genuinely think he, he, uh, he was. Aye. I just thought it was just fantastic. And the guy was, you know, diabetic, he, he, he had his health problems, but he was playing all the time. And I just think he was just he was magnificent. I see him at Paradise or Victor on the windfall, actually. I know, he's He was mine's. I suppose in the middle of the park, right, so I would, uh, Billy McNeil. Billy? Because Billy epitomises everything that a Lanarkshire Celtic supporter uh, is Aye. and you know, should be. And he was commanding and he, he great respect to his opponents and gave great respect to his opponents. So, and he was dominating. And when it came to the big games, you know, the, the boys were doing this, the Dunfermline in the 65. The Rangers in the Cup final, 69, my first big Rangers game. Um, he was there and he scored. Aye. Um, racing Club World Club Championship final. Uh, I just thought, Big Billy. Who? And the next one, if I think about who would be beside him, and I thought he'd Bobby murdered, and it went down to two, and, and Virgil van Dijk. And Is that how you would yes, pick? Aye. And I, I think, I'd go with Virgil van Dijk. I think he's been in every just, team apart from. Uh, Mine, maybe. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't like to take. You know, I didn't, but I think overall, I just thought Joe Van Dyke just did. Um, I did. It was just a solid class. And then it left back. Glad to see it back. Um, it's a no brainer. It, 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 it's KT because uh -huh. he's one of ours. He's one of our I own. Know, um, I know. I know. But again, he epitomises what he said. You know, that's, a, that's, that's actually nine in a row. Yeah. Yeah. That's and and so I would, I would not. And I thought he Tommy Gamble swashed Buckland. Full back, great full back, really, really good. But uh, no, no, the young man was does it for me. Ah, good, that's no. good. You'll be glad. So uh, central midfielders. Well, well, you can go with three, three know, up I mean, top. I, I mean, I would go in. I'd sit in the midfield, uh, Scott Brown, uh, because he carried the club. On his shoulders at times he did. in games. He did. So that that's and took, that's, a, and took a lot of shit off the fans and as well. And, and he I just had. he just he just held. I know that he held the club and he held the dressing room together at that time. So Scott Brown, um, Paul McStay. McStay. And when we say he was a maestro, he actually was a maestro. And again, in a different way, quieter, um, absolutely. Held Celtic football early nineties. He did. Together. He had to. And listen, his shoulders. Aye. Game after game. 
Quite the same as Bruni as well. It was quite, it was quite young mm. after the kind of centenary year and that when we started so to slide. So Bruni's behind so him, you know, and, and McStay sort of making things happen. <coughs> and on his right, right, two winners, and two, two winners, uh, uh, they're only one number seven, Jim Jenke, uh, just because he was just, he was the greatest player ever, ever I've seen, he just, I've never seen yeah, I, was, I, was, I was really lucky. What he's done I saw him destroying Sanetti and I saw him destroying Red Star when he was trying to promise him. You know, I was at the game, I saw him destroying Leeds United at Leeds. I saw him destroying Atletico Madrid and he was talking about the up and down the park. The Real Madrid. The, the Atletico game, Madrid. The Real Madrid testimonial game away De after the final. We won the European Cup and he. I'll free with the start. Aye, and he ran them off their feet all day that day and all. Aye. But even the, the, Madrid, the one I'm talking about was 1974, the European Cup semi final. Oh, the The wee right? man was kicked <coughs> from the start of the game to the end and he terrorised him. Uh, he just terrorised him. So don't you know, you don't get a like that now. Nah, nah. His, nah. You wonder how the guys played week in, week out with the abuse nah. they took nah. compared nah. to the prima donnas that play for nah. nowadays. And, and these guys were not athletes. Imagine Paddy <laughs> Roberts playing nah, three nah, games nah, in a row nah, getting nah, that treatment. Nah. <laughs> Exactly. Anybody, nah, uh, and on the left, I would go with Tommy Burns. And again, I'm going for this the, the psyche of what a Celtic player should be, how he should act, what he would do, how it meant, how much it meant to him <coughs> to win, how much it meant to him when we lost. It was the same as us. <coughs> and I just think the guy was a really yeah. crafted, crafty football. The team, <coughs> the team, a lot of it. In fact, every player on the team, other than being good for the players, as you say, know how to hold the cell off a park right. as well. Right. And, and, and in front of the media and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's, that's what I've noticed about it. Aye, definitely. So yeah. that's, that's what it should be. I mean, you can have a great player on the park, and if he's leading a bad life, then he's not a Celtic legend, he's never going to get a Celtic Well, there's a boy just left. Well, that's so exactly. That's exactly. Aye, so that's it for me. And up front, um, surprise enough for Henry Larson, <laughs> just get any of that. Uh, and again, he just because he just epitomised. I remember his first game, remember his last game, remember all the ones between it. Aye. And he was the guy. Was just amazing. And that's why he's always spoke the same breath. He was. He was actually it? very close to Jimmy Johnson and who the greatest player was. Aye. And I don't Aye. know if it was just because your age and your emotion for the old days. Aye. But I, I would, <coughs> it put him right up there. Oh, definitely. Aye. Aye. I think I Aye. think still to this day, he's a. Kind of the only player that you can still talk about oh. as well as talk about the list of mine. Yeah. That's that's that says something about the guy, doesn't it? He was just magic. Um, and last place, uh, Kenny Rubbish. Yeah. Kenny Rubbish. Yeah. And again, that's a generational thing whereby the guy I actually saw making his debut in 3-4-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-
I think ultimately, I don't know the answer, but no, ultimately it's got, to be, it's got to be, it's got to be peer pressure, peer bonding, because you know if you are you're in a bad place, you will listen to someone who's been in a bad place, Aye. and you'll take advice more from that person. Who I totally agree with that. So that and that's what makes you know that's what makes the charity so unique. It's, a a it's, it's not people, it's not professionals, that's no, I'm not trying to downplay any professionals because they've, they're very important, but I just think that, that, that you know, young, TV men, people young women, that's came from bad experiences. They, they, they'll, they'll listen to an experience and, and hopefully um, take it on board. Aye. Yeah. Aye. But it's very, it's very difficult, you, you know, we're in an area that, 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 that's, you know, there's a lot of deprivation in this area. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure on people, and you know, you, you, a lot of people can only take so much. And and, and we live a kind of intense kind of life at times. Some people in the area, you, you know that you know, it's just you, know, you know when people are living on it. You know, the people have always been lived, have lived day to day to survive. But but there's so much other added pressures now, commercialism and and. and People want things instant. That, that if you build all these little bricks up, that's you building that big wall. Aye. And that's why you have to get out of Speak to someone yeah, aye. that you know. Actually, the worst thing you can do is you sit down and you think, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, they don't. And as you say, they're not professional, <clears throat> but they've been to places that you've been but, but the most professional people there are the people. Oh, aye, aye, I think so it's as like well. It's university life. Aye, I think so you know, as well. If you can do that university life of, of, of darkness, aye. then you're able to, if you can, talk to, to, to somebody, somebody that's a doctor, such aye, it's you, you, and, and just, people need to know, don't feel as though you can speak to people. Aye, that's it's, my it's, big it's thing. It's okay to talk to a stranger. Oh, aye, def it's better to talk to aye. a stranger. Aye, of course it is. Better to talk to a 100%. 100%. 100%. That's good, I'd like to touch on that and um, I'll speak yeah. to you next week. But thanks very much, guys. That was um, episode nine of the podcast with, with Mr. Frank Roy. Um, as I say, uncensored, unedited, nothing like that. I don't know how to do it, that's why it's like that. So I'll be going up on YouTube hopefully tomorrow. Um, comments will be off, probably. Don't, I don't really like listening to negative stuff anyway. So. Keep a wee eye out for it guys, I, um, I'll, I'll post a wee hang up on Twitter and Facebook just to let you know what time it's up at, uh, hit that wee like button and the wee subscribe, it'll help me out going forward. Thanks again mate, Nobody. and I'll see you in the coming weeks, thanks very much guys.